Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Monday Memo. In finance we do a lot of planning and budgets, close cycles, payment runs and so on but you know there's so many more tasks that we need to plan to do that sometimes it might feel there's simply not enough hours in the day for us to go do, do it all. Uh, that can sort of lead to like feelings of overwhelm, stress and just getting frustrated with things uh, at work or outside of work. And for a lot of us we tend to go after the symptoms of this sort of problem rather than tackling what was driving it in the first place overall and for a lot of us what's a challenge here is something called a planning fallacy and this planning fallacy could be seriously holding us back uh, from not only enjoying our work but also from making a bigger impact there and also those other things about whether or not we take our frustrations home or take it out on other people like our colleagues or our friends or family and you know just from my own personal perspective, um, I've I've been suffering from the planning fallacy myself a bit lately. I had a non-work issue where we had a toilet upstairs that started leaking in the bathroom. And because of a lack of available tradespeople and the urgency of the job, I had to go renovate it myself. And because I suppose my lack of experience probably underestimated a fair few of the jobs, although I did finish some early. But overall, it did mean a number of late nights and early mornings outside of work. That had to be put in as well as weekends which I would have preferred ultimately doing other things. So what is this planning fallacy? Well it's not our traditional operating plans or budgets. Instead there's a term attributed anyway or coined by Kahneman and Tversky uh, and also by another chap called Douglas Hofstadter around the same time. And it largely is to do with our optimism around delivery of certain things. So for Hofstadter he was actually looking at the optimism that machines, computers, could be humans at the game of chess. And programmers had estimated it would probably take 10 years uh, in the 60s, so from the 60s, 10 years into the 70s, to be able to do that. But it wasn't until 1997 that IBM's Deep Blue became the first machine to be the human champion. Uh, and for those of you that remember, it was Gary Kasparov that Deep Blue beat. But, you know, even if it was another example, you can think of all the major project costs or time overruns, uh, typically large government projects, complex projects and stuff that we tend to underplan the time and cost for. And some, sometimes actually that's part of our role in finance is to call out what some of these risks might be and then factor those into the appraisals, the business cases and so on. But how many of us actually do it with our own tasks? And maybe we might use the excuse because we feel overloaded as it is and, and I'm very busy. We maybe tend not to do it as much for ourselves and so on. But what actually happens with the planning fallacy is we typically expect tasks that take less time than they actually do because our estimates that we're using are generally based on our recent or more standout memory. Maybe our best past experience rather than the average time of all those taken to do similar tasks in the past. And it's just, again, where brain is just conserving energy or taking automatic shortcuts, they tend to rely on a, a single example of what's happened rather than bothering to go through all the work of calculating that average across multiple data points. And as a result, then we tend to set excessively optimistic expectations for ourselves. And again, in finance and accounting, it doesn't take much to tip us over the edge when we have already fairly busy and an overload of work as it is so so if we were to say an additional yes to something that we probably should have delegated or dodged just because we were trying to be helpful or even covering for a colleague who's gone on vacation we can really feel the impact for this so some ways to solve for this and like again my recent example i probably should have known better uh, you could probably call them the three d's and the first one is disaster uh, first off, an awareness of our brain's natural optimism for these shortcuts. Now, given that you've just listened this far, you should now be aware of it. So how do you solve for it? Well, you just imagine a worst case outcome because of our tendency to look at the best or most favorable outcomes. So what if things didn't go to plan? Some people might call this a pre-mortem. So we look at disaster before something happens as opposed to afterwards. And we can also ask others for thoughts um, on our estimates as well. Uh, of what could go wrong to to account for these as well, particularly people who might have a bit more experience. The other D is double it. So it's a rule of thumb, and I don't know who to attribute it to. I did try and find out, but I've heard it a few times now. But take the time that you've estimated and double it. This is a rule of thumb. And that's another way of hedging 
uh, our optimism to complete a task. So, you know, that forecast model you wanted to build, uh, that might now become four days as opposed to two. But the key, if you are going to stretch the time out, is to balance it against Parkinson's law, which says that the time to complete anything will inevitably expand to fill the time you've allowed for it. So that's why it's important to, to chop it up small and go with the third D, set deadlines. And, you know, it's a bit like students uh, when it comes to submitting that paper or that assignment. Few of them actually submit their work early. Most people tend to wait to the last minute. And you see this in organizations, particularly in sales organizations, where they tend to leave things towards the end of the, the quarter or the end of their sales bonus period. You have this hockey stick effect, I think some people call it. So break the work into smaller chunks, set deadlines for each one of those and stick to them and really hold yourself accountable if you were to miss it. You know, that reward you were thinking of having, you can't have it until you finish it or you can't move on to your next task until it's done. And another way, maybe it's a fourth D, is data, right? Maybe a small D. Record how well you are doing against those tasks. Uh, you know, I've written a couple of books now and it's the only way I've been able to get them done in, in the time I allotted was to actually track how much time I was putting into it and how I was progressing against the plan. And then you can sort of feed that then into, into your next task. And that was, like again, from the first the first book I, I wrote, I underestimated the time that it took to, to do the editing piece, even though I was well ahead on the writing piece. It was much faster. I wrote it in half the time as it took to edit, so overall finished on time, but then fed that learning, that data, into the second book. And if you were to start following these three or four Ds, you know, you'll start overcoming that planning fallacy and reduce the stress and frustration you have from having to manage those situations where you'd underestimated the time they take taken to complete just because you just allowed your brain's automatic systems to take over control from more conscious ones. And that's why it's it's great to be able to bring on guest mentors to the Strength in the Number show so they can share with you their learnings, what techniques have worked for them, their stories where they perhaps had a more harder one lesson than they would have cared to, but helps us then be able to develop better influence and make a better impact in our organizations, as well as have a better, more enjoyable career in accounting and finance. So look, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please remember to share it with your friends, colleagues. You can subscribe on all the major platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. And as always, really appreciate investing your time with us today. So until next time, take care of yourselves. And let's keep on building our strength in the numbers.